What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. This week, probably about three weeks of work actually compressed into this 20 minute long video. So it's all about the suspension, upgrading uh, the front springs of the suspension, restoring the suspension, ball joints, everything that you can think of front suspension wise, except for steering is covered in this video. So hope you guys enjoy and uh, stick around for next week because I'm finally getting back to the engine. Before I paint these, I decided to press in the bushings just because I don't want to scratch up my fresh paint job on these. Anytime I try to press something in, I always put these in the freezer because they can shrink up then and then try to heat around this area here and uh, it'll make an installation a lot easier. I also painted where the bushing is going to be covering this, just threw on some spray paint real quick and that way it will have some corrosion protection as well. And then I'll be able to finally, after I'm pressing it in, paint these with the Eastwood 2K ceramic black.
So everything is finally hung. This was a job in itself, getting everything prepped, wiped down, hung up with these chains. I use zip ties to connect everything. You have to be mindful when you're painting because if you put a zip tie around just this hole, you're gonna be blocking some of this area that you need to paint. So what I did was I just put a bolt through it and then I'll be able to have a small gap to get in the back of this to get some paint in there and also just take note because this side you're not going to see but the bolt is going to be blocking it so i could just touch that up with a brush but this side i want to have a nice consistent flow pattern on this so right out of the gun i want it to look really nice not have to use any brush to touch it up because this is going to be visible this part so just kind of like a little tip on making sure whenever you have something hung and uh, if it's blocking the spray of the gun, just make note of it that if it's seen or if it's not and how you can manipulate that to hang it. Let's do one coat of this rust encapsulator, maybe two depending on what kind of coverage and build I get. And then after that, everything is getting Eastwood 2K ceramic chassis black and satin, except I don't know if I'm gonna do these hinges or not. I just think the, the Eastwood's a little bit of a thinner paint it's durable and I don't want to really have too much of a build on there. So these are the only parts with these hood hinges. I might not put on a top coat with the 2K. So we'll just play that one by year. Have these hanging in a row, stain blasted them all. So everything should be nice and prepped, ready to go. So I also just got new calipers. They are different colors, so I'm gonna just paint them using that same paint to match the spindles and the drums. For the low cost of remanufactured calipers, it just wasn't worth my time restoring the old ones, although I am gonna keep the old ones just to make sure uh, if I ever need to do a crazy, complete, original restoration down the road, I have all the original parts.
So if anyone's ever doing one of these engine mounts for the Camaro, the correct part number that actually lines up with all the bolt holes correctly is called Anchor 2292. The service manual says that you're supposed to do two bolts up top and then one bolt towards the back. This one is empty and uh, there's not a hole uh, lined up for that one. So that's correct. Okay, so I got these upper ball joints all in. Uh, blue lock tighted those as well just to be safe. So those are all set. I also taped off and painted this so it doesn't flash rust. Same with the other one. I got new bump stops, which these are a big old pain to put in if you've ever had to try to put those in before. I had the ones from OER, I believe they're called. But anyway, I just had to end up cutting a little bit of this off so then you can then pull it up with some pliers. But it takes a lot of muscle to get those in and it's hard not to screw them up. Uh, meaning without tearing them, but I was able to get them in the first time. Just took me a while. And I also got new bump stops in the back. Those are easy because those just bolt right down in there and put a nut on the other side. I should be able to start packing the bearings with grease. I'm gonna be using this red and tacky grease for that and just packing them by hand. And also I have to paint these rotors where they're gonna be uh, not contacting the brake pads. So right here on the hub, on the edge of the fence, I'm gonna be throwing some of that Eastwood brake right on there just to make sure it doesn't flash rust. And then I'll be able to start putting everything back together, hopefully. Also, if you haven't watched the episode on the rear end, uh, I am using UMI's lowering leaf springs for the rear and for the front. This is a two and a half inch drop like I mentioned before, just because I am going with aluminum heads on the engine. So I wanted to have a little bit more drop than two inches. So I went with two and a half. All right, so they're all packed. I got the back ones in. The races are already pre-installed. I'll plop them in, tapered side in for the back first, and then I'll put these front ones in when I am done installing everything else as a last step. Definitely going to have to get this aligned. I'm just using the generic, uh, I think it's 0 0.030 maybe on each one. I've got to find a place that actually specializes in older car alignments and actually knows what they're doing without damaging stuff. When you're putting this lower control arm, this bolt in the front here, so it's going to go right there. This has to go in this way. So pointing towards the back of the trunk. Now the second one right here, can go in either direction, meaning this way or go in this way. Don't know why that is, probably due to whatever the geometry is gonna do with the bolt when it's moving up and down. Now for the fun part of putting in the spring, since I have two and a half inch UMI lowering springs, I'm not gonna be using a spring compressor, although I am gonna be using a little bit of force with the hammer and uh, just, just no way of getting around, not nicking up a couple little areas, so I will be touching those up with a brush with the same 2K ceramic chassis black from Eastwood after I'm all done with putting the spring in. So here is the spring I'm putting in. This is UMI 3050F is the part number. And these springs, this flat side goes up into there. The side that is not flat goes on the bottom. And make sure you clock the spring, meaning you see these second holes, these two holes right here. You have to cover up the first one and the second one will be partially covered. So the spring will be ending right about there. And uh, make sure you keep that consistent with the second spring that you put on the other side. And that just determines how to clock the spring and everything will be sitting correctly on the same on each side. You don't want to cover up the second hole right there. You just want to partially cover it. Do not completely cover it. Also, I'm not tightening these bolts for the lower control arm until everything is on the ground 
and weighed down with the engine in the car. There is the end of the spring where my finger is, and it is not covering that second hole. I'll make sure to do the same to the other side. I am going 70 foot-pounds on the upper ball joint, 85 foot-pounds on the lower ball joint. 